Hello and welcome to a new Sega News Bits. I'm Barry, with me is George. Hey everyone. And uh, we're holding a funeral here because uh, Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse, is apparently dead September 2nd. How sad. Uh, such, is the, such is the sad life of digital-only releases, you know, especially these licensed titles. Um, back in 2013, Sega and Disney teamed up. They brought back the original creators of the classic Sega Genesis Mega Drive game, Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse, and they remade it from the ground up. It looked really beautiful. Uh, we'll share our thoughts on the game itself, but uh, yeah, it was out, and now it's it's not going to be out anymore. What are your thoughts on this, George? Well, it's kind of expected at this point. I think this is not the... I mean, this is a good game. There were some issues with it. We can talk about that later, but like... It's still a solid release, and it's it's bad. I, I just feel bad watching it go. But Sega's also took down Outrun and Afterburner Climax. Yeah. So this stuff happens with with licenses. I think this is also on Disney. They and I've heard from Capcom that their licensing is really expensive for Marvel characters. I can so imagine. that's why there's no more Marvel versus Capcom games. I think uh, Disney needs. I think it's on both companies, but. I can see why Sega pulled away because they're not going to make another Mickey game. Probably it's kind of a waste of cash for them. Yeah, yeah, especially with Sonic coming back. You know, I mean, back in the day, uh, Castle of Illusion was, you know, was the big character platformer at the time for the Genesis, and then Sonic showed up, and you know, Sega really didn't need Disney anymore. They still, they still released Disney games for sure. It still made them money, but. In today's age, uh, there's no reason for Sega to be making Disney games at all. Exactly, I agree. They should focus on something in-house instead. But if you don't have the game, go buy it because it's not going to be available digitally anymore. And right. I think it's worth your... Right, and it should be noted that we don't dislike the Sega Disney games at all. In fact, some of them are some of my favorite games on the Genesis. It's just that, you know, you're seeing right here... They're losing the license or it's running out and they're pulling the game. Now you you look at Sonic, you know, I don't care what you think about Sonic 4 Episode 2, but there's no reason for Sega to ever have to pull that because they own it outright, you know. So unless there's some music licensing issue like with Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you know, it's, it's not going to be pulled and they can re-release and remake whatever the hell they want that they own. But let's talk about the game itself. When's the last time you played this game, George? Last night. Oh, wow. I played it last night because it was it was gonna go off and I had to record footage for this uh, video, so I was playing it last night. But uh, yeah, a lot of things stood out to me. Like I I still feel like the way that the game moves, the character jumping to jumping seems a little cheap. But outside, that's like my biggest major complaint. I feel like the whole game was kind of like a good idea. Like like you change every level. There's like a new objective, and it just feels fresh. It just it was really short. Yeah, um, I remember in my review that I wrote of the game. Uh, which I awarded it in A minus, which I think is pretty good. I compared it to like a Disney theme park ride, where it's it's not incredibly long. It's pretty short. I think the game takes about what two or three hours to complete, but you get so much packed into that and so much uh, variety that it it never becomes samey. You're never like, oh my god, I'm grinding through Castle of Illusion hour twelve. Uh, and there's always just fun little surprises that you want to go back and re-experience. And I remember that. From I, the, I agree. Yeah, and I remember that from the first game, and I, I think they did a great job carrying it over here. You know, it's a short. I mean, what? It, it's like two or three dollars right now. You'd be an idiot not to buy it. I was gonna say this is perfect for kids. Like this is obviously for kids, aimed at kids. Like the way the old Disney games were aimed at us as kids. For sure. For sure. And um, two hours for them is pretty good. You know, because it's on, I guess you'd say, older hardware. It's on the PS3, the Xbox 360. It's also on uh, iOS and Android, though. I wouldn't recommend those ones because the touch controls, they don't work as well as handheld controllers. Though it is interesting that uh, Castle of Illusion is now backwards compatible on Xbox One. It happened a day after this was announced. So if you want to sign that the uh, delisting is a thing, I mean, here we go. They're, they probably scrambled or moved it to the front of the line. Have you ever, you don't own an Xbox One, do you? I don't own an Xbox One, so I can't check it out. Uh, yeah, I was curious as to how this works because I own the 360 version but i don't own an xbox one yet like so if i ever did get an xbox one would i not be able to play it on the one 
do I have to download I, it? You have to re-download it, I think. And if, I think if you already own it and it's in your library, you should just be able to transfer it over. Cool, cool. So, yeah, so, I mean, buy it now. Um, that's the only thing, though, is the Xbox version is $15. It's not marked down. It is the only one available on modern hardware, I guess you could say. Outside the PC, but yeah. Of course, yeah. PC's not modern. Come on, man. No. <laughs> So uh, let us know in the comments below what you think about Castle of Illusion being delisted. Do you like Sega? Do you want Sega news? Visit SegaBits.com and don't forget to visit us on all of our major social networks.